All right, today we're going to talk about graphing ra rational functions. Uh, to warm up, I want to talk a little bit about uh, just some mental, mental math that can be done. Um, so looking at this question, without a calculator, which is greater, the square root of 8 or the cube root of 9? I want you to pause this for 45 seconds and think about that and come up with an answer and then come back to the video. Okay. So let's tackle this here for a second. So we're just going to do this all mentally. We're not going to use a calculator. We're just going to think through things. So the square root of 8. While thinking about perfect squares, there's 4 and 9. 8 is in between them. The square root of these, are square roots are 2 and 3. 8 is far closer to 9 than it is 4. So it's going to be something that's probably pretty close to, but smaller than, 3. Right, because it's very close to, the, to 9, so it's going to be very close to the square root of 3. It's between 2 and 3, I know that for sure. I'm guessing that it's a lot closer to 3 than it is to 4, because 8's a lot closer to, than it is to 2, because 8's a lot closer to 9 than it is to 4. Okay, so let's look at this one, cube root of 9. That's between the perfect cubes, 1 and, um, or sorry, 8 and 27. Right? Cube root of 8 is 2, cube root of 27 is 3. So nine, the cube root of 9 is also between 2 and 3. However, 9 is a lot closer to 8 than it is 27, like a lot closer. So this one is going to be approximately, but larger than 2. Uh, this should go the other way around here. 3 is just barely bigger than this. So which one's going to be bigger? Well, this is approximately but barely bigger than 2. This one is approximately but barely smaller than 3. I'm going to say uh, that the square root of 8 is going to be bigger than the cube root of 9. And we can check that on the calculator. Square root of 8 is approximately 2.83. And the cube root of 9, 9 to the 1 third, is approximately 2.08. So obviously this one is bigger. Um, it just kind of goes to show that you can do some more complex math in your head if you just change the problem a little bit to something that you can do, like changing the square root of 8 to the, be the square root of 4 or the square root of 9. And so just a little bit of warm-up there. We talked about how a reciprocal function is 1 over a polynomial function, meaning linear usually. So 1 over 3x minus 4, for example. A rational function is a polynomial function divided by a polynomial function. And these do not have to be linear, although they can be. So something like x squared minus 3x plus 4 divided by 2x squared minus 2x plus 11. That's an example of a rational function. There's a lot more complexity, especially when graphing, uh, but there are some rules that we can follow. Okay, so there's going to be a vertical and horizontal asymptote, just like we've talked about. There's going to be a vertical asymptote whenever the bottom is equal to zero. So whatever value makes the bottom zero, that's where there will be a vertical asymptote. And there can be more than one if there are more than one value of x that turn the denominator into zero. The horizontal asymptote is a little bit trickier. There are three rules to follow. If the degree of the top is greater than the degree of the bottom, there is no horizontal asymptote. If the degree of the top is less than the degree of the bottom, then the horizontal asymptote is the y-axis, the x-axis, excuse me, y equals zero. If the degrees are the same, then the horizontal asymptote is the line leading coefficient of the top divided by leading coefficient of the bottom. So for example, if we have 3x minus 4 over 5x plus 2, the lead, because the degrees are both 1, right, the degrees are both 1, then the horizontal asymptote will be y equals 3 fifths, the leading coefficients divided, top over bottom. Okay. This will make more sense as we put it into practice with some examples. Um, but the key here is, let's just do this a little bit simpler here, um, make a new table. If the degree of the top is greater than the degree of the bottom, there is no 
horizontal asymptote. And that makes sense. Think about the top. If you plug in a million and you have x to the fourth or a million to the fourth over a million squared, x to the fourth over x squared, let's say, as an example, this number is going to get incredibly huge while this number gets very large, right? Because you're squaring it and then squaring it again. So this is just going to take off to foreverville and it's not going to have a horizontal asymptote. If the degree of the top is equal to the degree of the bottom, like x cubed over x cubed, then the horizontal asymptote is y equals leading coefficient. So let's say this is 5 over 2. It's the just the coefficients. So leading coefficient of the top divided by leading coefficient of the bottom. And finally, the third option, if the degree of the top is less than the degree of the bottom, like let's say x over x squared, uh, 3 over 4, let's say as an example, then what happens here is that our horizontal asymptote is 0 because that's the value we're going to approach, right? As the bottom gets really, really, really big, the top's getting big also, but the bottom's getting big way faster. We're getting closer and closer to zero because we're dividing by an enormous number. Okay, so rewind, pause, whatever. Um, get these three options in your notes, and then we'll put them into practice with some examples. Okay, so here's three to look at. Example number one, x squared over x plus one. The degree of the top is bigger than the degree of the bottom. We've got degree of two over degree of one, so there is no horizontal asymptote. There's a different kind of asymptote that's going like this that we'll talk about in a second. Vertical asymptotes are where the denominator is equal to zero. So x cannot equal negative one, right? So at negative one, we have a horizontal, a vertical asymptote. If the degree of the bottom is bigger than the degree of the top, because we have x to the zero power up top and x squared on bottom, the bottom is bigger than the top in terms of degrees. So our horizontal asymptote is at zero. The vertical asymptote occurs when the bottom can be zero. So we got to look at this. When can the bottom be zero? We could factor that as x plus 1 and x minus 1. So x cannot equal plus or minus 1. So at negative 1 and positive 1, we have vertical asymptotes. Okay. Um, to figure out what happens in between, we're just going to plug in some values. But we want to lay out our asymptotes first. And then the third example, again, the degrees are the same. So we look at the leading coefficients. So 2 divided by 1 y equals 2 should be our horizontal asymptote, which it is. What makes x minus 3 equal to 0? That's the denominator. That's where our vertical asymptotes will be. x equals 3. And look, that's where our vertical asymptote is. So setting up those vertical asymptotes is the step that we want to accomplish first when graphing these. So let's try one. Let's start with the vertical. Where is the bottom equal to 0? So x minus 1 equals 0, so x equals 1. So that's the value that we can't have, right? That will break this function. So at x equals 1, here is our vertical asymptote. Okay, now let's look at horizontal. There's no guarantee to be one. The degree of the top is 3, degree of the bottom is 1. So the top is bigger than the bottom which means there is no horizontal asymptote, okay? Instead, we're going to look at how we do that later, but for now we're just going to make a table of values. So let's just plot some stuff in on both sides of 1. So we've got our table. I'm going to do uh, negative 1, 0, 2, and 3. Both sides of 1, but not including 1, because if I plug in 1, we divide by 0, and that's a no-go, right? So uh, let me erase so we can see up here. Change my color so we know what is happening. If I plug in negative 1, negative 1 cubed is negative 1. On the bottom, negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. So I have negative 1 over negative 2, or 1 half. If I plug in 0, the top becomes 0. Bottom is 0 minus 1. 0 over anything is 0. If I plug in 2 on the bottom, I get 2 minus 1. That's 1. And on top, 2 cubed is 8. So that's 8 over 1. And if I plug in 3, 3 cubed is 27, 
3 minus 1 is 2. 27 over 2 is like 13.5. So let's plot those real quick. Negative 1, I'm at 1 half. Right there. 0, I'm at 0. You can see that this is coming in and it's headed down. So we know that this is going this way. We don't know where it's going to the left, so I might need to do another one. Let's plug in negative 2. Let's plot the rest of my points first. So I've done negative 1, I've done 0, let's do 2. 2 is at 8, so that's way up here. 3 is at 13.5, so that's really taken off. right? So this one um, is coming down probably somewhere else. We probably need to do something closer, like 1.5. So we would just keep doing that on a calculator um, to find more values and continue plotting points. This one looks like it's doing something like this. This one's going to um, take off probably somewhere like that. So, or excuse me, somewhere like this. But let's look into a little bit more about how we how we do those. If I'm going to graph this guy, we're going to factor the top. You always factor first. Top's going to be x and x, uh, minus 3 plus 2. This one's already factored. It's x plus 1, x plus 1, x plus 1 over x plus 2, x plus 2. So let's go back to this first one here. What's going to make the bottom 0? Well, that would be negative 1. So that's my vertical asymptote. The top has a greater degree than the bottom, right? 2 over 1. So we are not going to have a horizontal asymptote. So we'll just make a table. Um, B. Greater degree of the top is greater than degree of the bottom. right? Bottom is 0 at negative 2. So that's our vertical. And we, again, would have to make a table. I'm going to skip ahead. Rather than make that table, I'm going to talk about what's called an oblique asymptote or a slant asymptote. That's what we've been seeing in these last three. And it's an asymptote, it's just not horizontal. Okay, so this is what happens when A is when the degree of the top is greater than the degree of the bottom. The slant asymptote, this is the key right here. The equation of the asymptote is top divided by the bottom with no remainder. So we need to do some polynomial division. And our quotient is the equation of the asymptote. For example, x to the fourth over 3x cubed. Um, or x to the fourth plus 3x cubed divided by x cubed minus 1. If I were to divide those, then what's left behind is the equation of our oblique asymptote. x plus 3. So if I do x cubed minus 1 and I divide that into x to the fourth plus 3x cubed. What do I have to multiply x cubed by to get x to the fourth? Well, I need to multiply by an x. That becomes x to the fourth minus x, right? Subtract that whole thing. That's gone. 3x cubed is going to be what's left over. And then that minus x will still be there because I'm doing uh, 0x plus x. So there's an x down here somewhere. <clears throat> what do I have to multiply x cubed by to get 3x cubed? Well, that's just 3. So 3 times 3x cubed minus 3x. I subtract. Uh, that's going to be 0. And then x plus 3x would be 4x. That's what I would keep trying to go into. That's the remainder. I don't care about the remainder. This is all I need. So my equation of the slant asymptote is x plus 3. So let's go back. Let's go back to this one here. If I'm going to actually do the division now, let me get my pen set up. Okay, I'm going to do uh, x plus 1 into x squared minus x minus 6. What would I have to multiply x by to get x squared? I have to multiply by x. So multiply that back through x squared plus x, subtract x squared minus x squared is 0. Negative x minus x is negative 2x. What would I have to multiply x by to get negative 2x? That would be negative 2. Multiply that back through. Negative 2x. We'll bring down this 6 uh, minus 2. Subtract that. 0, 6 minus negative 2. 6 plus 2 is negative 4. That's a remainder. I don't care about that. This is all I need. x minus 2. So my horizontal, or in this case, slant asymptote has an equation of x minus 2. y-intercept of negative 2, slope of x, or 1, excuse me, 
it should be going like this. Then I can just use my table to figure out where these curves should be. So let's plug in. Um, we want something in this area. Let's plug in 0. That's going to be 0, minus 0, minus 6, 0 plus 1. Negative 6 over 1 is negative 6. So at 0, we're way down here at negative 6. So I know that my function is going to look something like this. And we could plug in more values using a calculator into that table to get more points to plot these in. These will always be opposite each other. You see we kind of have this x of asymptotes. Uh, the two curves will always be opposite one another. So once I find one, I can mirror it on the other side. But table's your friend. Okay, let's do this one real fast. So this would be, I'm going to get a new sheet for this. x plus 1 cubed over x plus 2 squared. x plus 1 cubed over x plus 2 squared. So that is x plus 1 times x plus 1 times x plus 1 over x plus 2, x plus 2. So that is going to be x squared plus 2x plus 1 times x plus 1 over x squared plus 4x plus 4. I'm just multiplying those through in my head. You could do it and double check me, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. So the top will then become x cubed plus x squared plus 2x squared plus 2x plus x plus 1. Again, I'm just doing my distributive property up here. That's going to be x cubed plus 3x squared plus 3x plus 1 over x squared plus 4x plus 4. So we need to do that division, but we only care about the part that is not a remainder. So I'm just going to start this. I've got every power of x decreasing by 1, so I don't need to add any zeros in there. Hopefully you remember doing that. What do I have to multiply x squared by to get x cubed? Well, that'd be an x. So now I multiply x back by that whole thing. x cubed plus 4x squared plus 4x. I subtract my new value. x cubed minus x cubed is 0. 3 minus 4 is negative x squared. Uh, 3 minus 4 is negative x. And then I bring down a 1. What would I have to multiply x squared by to get negative x squared? I'll be a negative 1. Multiply that through. Negative x squared minus 4x minus 4. Subtract that whole thing. This is going to get a little bit messy, but that's okay. Uh, negative x squared minus negative x squared. That's 0. Negative x minus negative 4x. So that's negative 1 plus 4 is 3x. 1 minus negative 4, 1 plus 4 is 5. Can x squared go into 3x? No, this is my remainder. I don't care about it. All we need from this entire thing is this, x minus 1. So let's go back to this. My horizontal or my slant asymptote is at x minus 1. It's got a y-intercept of negative 1 and a slope of 1. So it's going to be coming up like this. Right? We can use our table to find a value. Again, pick an easy number. Let's do 0. Um, if we jump back to this version, it's probably easier to do. I'm plugging in 0. So that'll be 0, 0, 0. We're going to end up with 1. 0, 0 over 4. So 1 fourth at 0. Be like right here. So I know that this is going to be coming in, approaching, doing something like that. That is really bad. But if we plug in more points, we'd get more values. I would think you guys would probably need to plug in maybe 2 or 3 to get a good curve. I'm just trying to go fast to make the video short. Okay. So if the power, if the degree of the top is greater than the degree of the bottom, we divide the top by the bottom using polynomial division. And the resulting quotient is the equation for our slant asymptote. Okay. If the degree of the top is equal to the degree of the bottom, I just divide the leading coefficients. And that's my horizontal asymptote. If the degree of the bottom is bigger, um, then we have a horizontal asymptote at zero. Okay, so again, here's a bigger one. 2x minus 1 goes into x squared plus 4x plus 4. So what do I multiply 2x by to get x squared? Uh, 1 half x. So that's going to be x squared minus 1 half x. Um, Yeah, minus 1 half x. Subtract that. That's gone. 
4 minus a negative 1 half is 4.5x. I'll carry the 4 just for giggles. What do I have to multiply 2x by to get 4.5x? Well, 4.5 divided by 2 can be 2.25. Two point two five, and it already has the x, so we're set. So that's going to be four point five x, and then minus two point two five. Subtract. That's gone. Four minus negative two point five is six point two five, but that's a remainder because two x doesn't go into six point two five, so we're done. One half x plus two point two five. Two point two five, two and a quarter. Slope of one over two. So I'm going to go over two, up one, and it should look something like that. That's my horizontal or my slant asymptote. We don't have a horizontal asymptote. For a vertical asymptote, what makes the bottom equal to zero? Well, set that equal to zero. 2x equals one, x equals one half. That's where our vertical asymptote is, right down here. Plug in an easy point. If zero is not on there, I always do zero. So that'll become zero, that'll become zero. I have four. That'll become 0, 4 over negative 1 or negative 4. So at 0, we're down here at negative 4. So I know that it's going to come in and shoot down. So this one's going to come in and shoot down. Again, I'm being very sloppy. You should take a little bit more care than this. I'm trying to make the video short. Use a table around your horizontal asymptote to get a few points to draw your curves. I don't know what I just did. There we go. If you factor a binomial out of the top and bottom, you create a point discontinuity or a hole. So if when I factor it, I end up with something like this and I can cross out the x plus one over x plus one, that means there's a hole at x plus one. And I need to draw a little circle in my graph to show that the there is no value there because at that value, uh, we end up with a hole. The problem is this would turn into the graph of x plus two, right? When I take that out. So my graph is just a line. But at 1, or at negative 1 in this case, I still have a, a, a discontinuity. Because what we're really graphing is this original f of x function. It just so happens that the graph of this is identical to the graph of that function with the addition of this value that we can't include. Okay, So when you're factoring, if you find a binomial, x plus 1, x minus 2, whatever the case may be, that can be t taken out of the top and bottom, you've created a hole. So we have to remember that that's an excluded value. You graph whatever's left over, in this case x plus 2, but remember to show that at negative 1, that value that creates a problem, there's a hole. And you do that by just drawing a little circle in your line to show that there's a hole there. That's going to come up in the homework. Um, good luck. Again, as always, if you have any questions, go ahead and reach out. Otherwise, have a great day.